Greetings, I'm Professor Kay, and in this short video presentation, we're going to see how we go about capturing that first flag in our CTF for HA colon forensics. In a previous lab and video, I took you through the setup of your virtual lab environment for this capture the flag exercise. So if you have any questions about what is required for you to complete this exercise, please refer to the previous video on how to set up your lab environment. I currently have both an install of Kali Linux running and I have my forensics target currently up and running inside of VMware as well. To launch these two targets in VMware, I must open up an instance of VMware for each one of those virtual machines. Using our hackers methodology, we're going to begin this walkthrough by conducting a recon. So the first thing I want to do is figure out what IP address my Kali machine has assigned to it. So let's open up a terminal. And at the terminal, we're just going to type in ifconfig. And you'll see that my IP address currently assigned to my Ethernet 0 is 192.168.107.128. Now, this is my IP address. Your IP address will differ. I also need to mention that both of my machines are configured for host only networking in VMware. So now that I have my network IP, I can do a network discovery and I can find any available targets. Now in this walkthrough we know we have one target which is our forensics machine, but I don't know what the IP address is. So we're going to use NetDiscover and have it find that target IP address for us. So at the prompt, I'm just going to right click in here and I'm going to paste the following NetDiscover space dash I which says use the following interface and I want you to use Ethernet 0 the interface that currently is in use on my Kali machine and find any targets that are out there. Hit enter and in just a moment it'll come back and it will give me any available targets that it finds on the network. After a few minutes NetDiscover comes back and gives us a couple of IP addresses of potential targets. Now, when we're talking about DHCP servers in VMware or VirtualBox, usually the target will have a very close host IP related to what was given to the Kali installation. So my Kali installation was 128. We can look at 129 and pretty much assume that that is my target. Now, anytime that you're in doubt, you can just go up here to your player, go up into the Manage, go into virtual machine settings and you can click on your network adapter click on advanced and down here you'll see that you have the MAC address so the MAC address of your target that is discovered inside of NetDiscover should match the MAC address that has been assigned to it by VMware we're now ready to run our nmap scan against our target and we're going to be looking for services so I've typed in nmap space dash capital A which is the script that's going to look for those services that are currently running on our target followed by the IP address of our target. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. Give that a second to complete. The results of our nmap scan show that we have two services currently running on our target. We have port 22 which is running SSH and then we have a web server running on port 80. So as always we're going to take a look at that low hanging fruit first. And to do this, let's just open up a web browser. To do this, I'm going to go over here to my application quick launch. And from the context menu, I will open up my web browser. Now, up here inside of the address bar, we just want to type in the IP address for that target machine. So once our web page does open up, we see that we have a little button up there at the top right. That says, click here to get flagged. And so this is going to take us nowhere. All right. So let's move on we can go ahead and close out our browser let's turn back on over to our desktop so the next thing we have to do as far as enumeration is perform our brute force on our directory and to do this we're going to use derp so at prompt i've typed in derp space http colon forward slash forward slash the ip address of my target let's go ahead and hit enter and so our derp scan has completed and it looks like we got a directory for images. So let's go ahead and take a look at what's inside of that. Again, we can just open up a web browser and let's just pull this down. And we're just going to do a backslash 
and follow that up with the word images. And here we go. Let's take a look at what we have under DNA. With the exception of the fingerprint.jpg, which is the last file in the list, all of these other images were just rabbit holes and they went nowhere. And let's take a look at the fingerprint JPEG. Let's go ahead and download this image and we'll take a look at the metadata that is behind it. I'm just going to right click on it. We're going to save the image as, save it to my downloads directory, and let's just go ahead and do a save. So we're going to stop just for a moment here and we're going to get caught up with some information that you probably need to have. What we're trying to do here is view the metadata of this particular image file and that's called XF data. So XF is short for exchangeable image file, which is a format that is a standard for storing interchange information in digital photography. Image files such as JPEG compression or and some other types as well. Almost all new digital cameras use this XF annotation. They store information on the image such as the shutter speed, exposure, compensation, the F number, and the metering system that was used. Now it also allows you, if you get the XF editor, add comments inside of the image as well as malware and other forms of additional data. So that's why this XF data is so important. So that's why we're going to look inside this file to see if we can find anything that is going to be useful in moving on with this capture the flag exercise. So for this exercise, I was going to use the XF tool, but for whatever reason, it did not like this image. And when I say it didn't like the image, I meant it would not allow us to look at the data. So let's just bring up a command prompt. Now I've installed the XF tool, and you're probably going to have to install it as well. Let's see if I can bring up this command real quick. So I moved the image to my desktop because I thought maybe there was a problem with the folder permissions or something that was stopping it from seeing or opening up the file to look at the metadata. So the command that I used was XF tool space dash dash list or show me the fingerprint.jpg XF metadata. Now this is the command that everybody's supposed to be using, but then it tells me the command cannot be found. So then I go up in here like so, and I'm going to back off this tool portion, and I'm just going to use XF. Now I'm also going to back off one of these dashes. I'm going to just add a lowercase l for list. And again, I'm going to follow that up with the name of the image that I want to look at. But I want to hit enter. It says it's not readable or does not contain XF data. So that's what it tells me. Now, I thought, well, maybe it's a problem with the tool. So I kept trying to figure out what's going on with this tool. And then I thought, well, maybe it's not the tool. Maybe it's the image. So I went out to the Internet. And on the Internet, you can find a number of free sources that will allow you to upload a JPEG or any other image and examine the XF data. And that's what I did. Surprisingly, a couple of the web pages that I went to the first time could not examine the XF data that was inside of this image either. But finally, on the third website, I was able to actually view the XF data. Let's see how I did that. So the first thing I had to do was go up here to Player, go to Manage, go to my Virtual Machine Settings, and I had to change my network adapter from Host Only to NAT, and that got me out to the Internet. We'll change it back to Host Only when I'm done. Go ahead and say OK to that. Next, I opened up a browser, and I went out to the Internet, and this is where I did the search for sites that would allow me to examine the XF information behind a JPEG or any other image. This is one of the sites right here. This site didn't work. Now, this site did work. Let me go full screen here, and we're going to scroll down, and you come to this option that allows you to upload the image. So we're just going to browse on over to my desktop. We're going to find that fingerprint.jpg, just double click it, and now we're going to upload. Now you get two different outlooks here. You get the summary, which is pretty much just the properties of the file and some information about the resolution and other items 
that might be of interest to a photographer. But if you look at the detailed, now you get into a lot more information to include the comment. And here we see on our comment that we have our first flag. So when we're looking at the information inside of a image file for the metadata or the XF information. What we're looking for is secret information or secret messages. We're looking for comments. We're looking for additional images that might be embedded, uh, files even. Uh, these are the things that can be hidden inside of the XF data using the right tools. So I did do my due diligence and I did research the error messages that I was having trying to use the XF tool. But all I found was a lot of other people were having the same issue. And so you are encouraged to try to use the XF tool and see if it's going to work for you. But if not, know that there are other resources, other ways of examining the XF data just by going to the internet and using a optional free source. And so before we wrap up this first short video on how to capture that first flag, let's go back on up to player. Let's go to manage. Let's go to virtual machine settings. And under networking adapter, let's change our cells back to host only. Go ahead and say OK to that. And now we're back inside of our own private network. And so in this short video presentation, you got to take a look at how we go about capturing that first flag for our CTF HA colon forensics. Got any questions? You got any concerns? Don't hesitate to reach out and contact your instructor and I'll see you in our next video where we move on to capture that second flag.